time, okay? Father God, I pray that you would help each and every one of us to search our hearts, to search our minds. Lord, I pray that you would help us to lay, away, lay aside every weight and sin that would get in the way from us coming before you this morning. I pray that you would help us to understand your love and your grace in its, in its entirety and in its greatness. Father, I pray that you would bless each and every one that came here this morning. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys go ahead. I'm going to be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Paul says, For I have received from the Lord that which I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat and drink this bread, or eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And do you understand that what we're doing is not just eating and drinking a wafer and some grape juice. More importantly, we're remembering the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus, when he looked at his disciples and said, this is my body, was totally and completely telling them, I'm going to be broken. For you. He took the bread and symbolically ripped it in half and said, This is my body, broken for you. After which, and I don't know if you realize this, but a body normally doesn't bleed until it's broken, right? So he done the juice afterwards and said, This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. So that I will suffer. And I will pour out my blood so that I can start a whole new covenant with you. Amen? Amen. Now watch this. I'm going to show you just a glimpse. In the Old Testament, in the temple, the bull that was placed on the altar had to be what? Cut in half. And the blood was sprinkled on the altar. Amen? Now watch this. The same way that Jesus Christ was torn in half for us and His blood was put on the altar, we have forgiveness. Amen? But not in the same way. Now I don't have to go to the temple and sacrifice a bull or a goat or a dove or any other animal. And I don't have to live by certain rules to make it to heaven. Two rules, Jesus said. And I put it in my text and in my post every week. Love God and love people. He, Jesus said there's two great commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. If you can do these two things, he said, you can fulfill the whole law. So if I do nothing else right in my life, if I love God and I love people, I fulfill the law. Amen? In the new covenant, Jesus wants us to be free from the law of sin and death. And free from the bondages of the curse of the law. Amen? And that's what he was telling his disciples. And they understood all the symbolism that he'd done. When he broke that bread in half and said, This is my body broken for you. He was saying, I am the lamb that was slain. Amen? Amen? I am your sacrifice. Amen? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would bless this bread and bless this wine, this grape juice. 
Lord, I pray that as we drink and as we eat, that we would remember the sacrifices that you made and the covenant that you made with us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, I guess we could have did that. You know, I might want one. Did you get Carmen one? She didn't. Okay. Okay. Got microphones everywhere. Is this one off? Hello. Go ahead and eat and drink. It's okay. That's pretty good. Great juice. All right, we're going to pray and we'll dismiss the children. Father God, I pray that you would help us this morning as we worship you. Help us as we try to lay aside every hardship and every struggle that we had this week and help us to seek your face. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, kids. You guys can go back there to Children's Church. I know. You got the You ready? I'm playing the sound man today. You this? Good. Good. Yeah. You, you're, you, her, and Angela. Yep. All right. I That's what I do. I just got the whole bowl of green beers going. I know, I told you. Yeah, you look kind of like it right there. <laughs> hey, you can tell everybody that wants to stand in worship. Everybody that wants to stand in worship can.
Got me a sound, man. You gotta give me a break.
can change, right? They're, they're not set in stone. You know that, right? You're, you're like a construction person. You know those things. It can change. So I'm not going to give you the quote, but it was very reasonable for a completed building. Um, we also have been talking about the possibility of renting Janelle's building on the corner over there, and it's 
it's within our means to do so, we would have to really work for it. You know what I mean? Um, Carmen and I both have an income coming in now, so that would help us in a, acquiring a building like that. Woo! Amen. And I'll, I'll take that person. Amen to that, right? Amen. But the plus side about getting our own room is not only will we have a place that we can have church in any time we want, Carmen and I won't have to carry all this stuff up here every week. <laughs> It would be very nice not to have to do that. This podium we just added, Carmen got it for free from her work. All right. That's awesome nice. stuff. The price was right. The price was right for me, that's for sure. It was free. All I had to do was drive down there, figure out that my battery was completely dead, and change it in the middle of Walmart parking lot, and then go to the ATM and get Carmen's money for some Avon stuff, and pick this up and go home. It was really easy. <laughs> I didn't have any tools in my van to change my battery. So I had to buy one of those hyper stuff things, hyper tough ratchet sets for like $7 so I could change my battery in my van. It was great. Yeah, I have a, I have a set of hyper stuff in my van right now. I don't call them hyper tough because it's not true. <laughs> It would be <laughs> But anyway, uh, we had a haul this here this morning too, which made it getting here this morning very difficult. So we need to pray about a building. We need to be honest in praying about a building. And then anyway, Doug Anderson is not feeling good, so we need to pray for him, okay? And I'm going to get to my notes because Carmen put a whole list of stuff I need to say. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. First of all, we need to give a huge thank you to Angela and Ball for taking time out of her schedule to shop for families in need and for food and for our upcoming spaghetti feed and the raffle on Saturday. We're having this. Give a hand, a hand, a hand, a hand. We're having a spaghetti feed this coming Saturday here at uh, the senior citizens building. Yeah. It's good, huh? What is it? This Saturday from 12 to 2. We have this building from 11 to 3, so we have time to set up and clean up. Right, but we're having a spaghetti feed and a raffle. It's going to be, uh, what, where's the paper? Do you have all the papers? Oh, uh, no, I didn't. Okay. I'm going to try to do this for memory. It's $5 for adults and $3 for kids. And then we're going to have uh, raffles. We're raffling off some. What do you have? Hold on, Dustin. What do we have for the guys? A bunch of Dale Senior memorabilia. So if you know any race car fans, you need to give them a flyer to come to the spaghetti feed because we got some Dale. We have Dale Earnhardt Senior memorabilia that we're raffling off, okay? You raffle tickets are a dollar or two dollars, is it a dollar or three dollars? One dollar and three dollars piece. And then, the, what do we have for the ladies? I made a basket of bath and body stuff, and then Michelle is donating a photography session and then prints on a CD and a here, here, you need to say that louder. No one can hear you. I know. Okay, um, so I made a bath and body works basket with lotions, body wash, spray, some of those loofahs. Um, Michelle has a photography studio, and so she's donating her time, and then a CD with some prints, so you get all the poses on the CD, and then she'll print a few out. Um, if Jonalyn has time before she goes home, she's gonna make a painting for us to raffle off. And then I know Carmen plans to go, I think at least Kmart this week and possibly Walmart to see what else they have. Just in case nobody knows, Kmart's going out of business in Bartlesville, so everything is super cheap. So if you need anything from Kmart, go now. <laughs> so 
if you um, want to help serve food or set up or clean up or whatever next Saturday, let me know after church and I'll make a list so that we can get everybody where they need to be to help. Um, we got lots of uh, garlic bread that we're going to have at this spaghetti team too. So you can't have spaghetti without garlic bread, right? Is that like right. totally not right? Or garlic, so, period. Or garlic, anything. Leave that garlic out. I hope no vampires show up because they would die. I'm just letting you know. What? Oh, we need hamburger. We're taking donations for hamburger meat for the spaghetti feed. We have all the noodles. We have all the spaghetti sauce. We have all the garlic bread. We just need hamburger meat. I'm hamburger without I'll grab a roll of 10 pounds. I'm with her. Okay. All right. Looks like we got a hamburger covered. Do we need more than that? No. Uh, one pound? I mean, unless you want to have a barbecue afterwards. <laughs> five pounds or the 10, well, five pounds. You know the big rolls. What is this for, Saturday? For Sunday. Sunday. For Saturday. 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 Okay, from 12 to 2. Okay, now, here, let's get to the big important part about what this is for. Go ahead. What's you your guys have flyers that we can take? We have flyers. <laughs> we have flyers. Carmen put it on flyers. She has them. I will take some. All right. What this, what this spaghetti feed is for? I guess we should have told you about that, too. It's to raise money for a building. Amen. Yay. Yay. Yeah, it's going in the bank. It's going in the bank so we can get better. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's, it's a building fund <laughs> project. Amen? Right. And we get to eat. That's great. I like food. Hey, Catholic people don't do nothing without eating, do they? And drinking beer. And drinking beer. <laughs> 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 you don't want to talk about that. <laughs> yes, no, they would not have let us go to communion this morning. Right, right. <laughs> okay, and I want to thank, uh, it says thanks to uh, Mr. Peterson, that's Carmen's boss, uh, for the donation of the property. Amen. Amen. That was great. Her boss just said, yeah, you can have that. So I went through and got it. It's great. That's a nice one. It's heavy too. I'm gonna let you carry it. Hey, so. yeah, that's, not, no, that's nothing but help for you. You won't go work out. Oh, you got flyers. We need some more. Yeah, we can scan and copy them too. We can make more. Okay, don't worry about it. Uh, Prayer request. Does anybody have a prayer request? I want to get them. What do you? D Dustin was praying that he gets all that stuff now. He had a walk through. No, I had. Oh, he's got his walk through Tuesday. Mike already got a walk through and has already told he's getting hired. You see how Christ got work some things. I'm just letting you know. We prayed about it last week. The same, didn't we? Last Sunday, we prayed about it. I wasn't here Sunday. We prayed about it. I was here. I remember. Why did we pray that, didn't we? Okay. Tina remembers. Anyway, so he's got a job, and Dustin's wanting one too. He's already got one, he just wants a better one. He will get it. That's right. I applied for FEMA. You applied for FEMA? Yes. And I'm leaving Tuesday to go to Texas. To help out? To help out until Saturday, so I'm hoping I'll be back for Saturday. Amen. Well, let's, we'll pray for you before you leave. Okay? So that you can be a blessing in Texas. Amen. Amen. They're all lost down there, but they don't realize they haven't lost anything right. because God still got them. God still got it, right? That's right. All right, any more prayer requests? I want you to pray for Christina. Her mother passed away uh, late Thursday night. Christina, what's Christina's? Ficka, Miss Ann's daughter. Ficka? Mm -hmm. Okay, Christina Ficka. Pray for me. Pray for Sierra. The, well, I put an app in for a dog. I enjoy really working for your mom, but this job's got a lot more opportunities. And it'd be really nice. So we, even though you know we're going to work and we make it through, I'm tired of being broke. Amen. Nobody likes being broke, okay? I can be content with having very little, but it's always nice to have a little more. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. Uh, 
Any more prayer requests? Dustin's sister. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Carmen will put it on the list. Let me look. Yep, right there. Uh, do we want to leave it unspoken? Okay. And she has she's been pregnant twice in the last couple months and she's lost a boat. Yeah. And, and my stepmom found her on the floor yesterday. She had OD on some prescription drugs. Mm. So, so she definitely she, needs some prayer. She definitely needs some prayer. She well, we're gonna, we're gonna. Go. Well, we're going to pray earnestly. So anybody, I, want to, I want to ask a serious question. How many of y'all pray on a regular basis? Okay? We need to put this girl, anytime you think of her, I need you to say, God, take a hold of her. Brittany. Take a hold of Brittany. Amen? She needs God in a severe way. Okay? Not only do we, not only do we want to help all the, you know, the, the, uh, Addiction issue with the pills or taking the pills, but we want to help them with her physical condition. Amen. And ask God to intervene. Amen. Uh, any, any other prayer requests? Do we need to pray for Jenna in that school? Right? We need to keep praying for you while you're at school. Okay. Look, I wasn't going to forget about you. We need to continue to pray for Brooklyn. We find out when we go to school. I know. She's like. When we go to Kansas City for surgery. Okay. She will be there for three months. Wow, that's a lot. Pray for Brooklyn. Anybody else? There's a pray for Cotton Mill. Pray for the spaghetti feed. I'm not praying for the spaghetti feed so that we can get a whole bunch of money for a building. I'm praying for the spaghetti feed so that we get to hand out lots of spaghetti to people and they get to meet you. I would say me, but I'm not near as, nearly as interesting as you are. Okay? I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, pray for Carmen and her job. They're going through lots of transitions. She's still with the company. A lot of people have lost their job. They have a temporary campaign that's coming in. And she's trying to help out with that. So keep praying your prayers. What do they do? It's a call center. They work on several different campaigns. One's an insurance, uh, home owner's insurance, uh, part of it. They used to have uh, a banking side, which is what Carmen was into, but it left. Uh, so they're still doing other things there. Uh, let's pray. I really feel like we need to pray. We really need to come into agreement for some of these things. Father God, I pray right now that you would hear our cry. God, we know that you know every single situation that is going on, Lord. From Brooklyn to Brittany, from Sierra to Dustin, from Jillian and Carmen, and every single prayer request, God. We know that you know the thickest situation. We know that you know that her mother passed away. We know that you have her, God. But Lord, we ask that you would intervene in these situations, God. Whatever your will is in these situations, God, I pray that you would give people peace in their heart and their mind to know that you have your hand in the situation, God. I pray for healing and restoration. I pray for an intervention, God, of your spirit in people's lives, that they would know you, that they would turn away from whatever it is that's holding them back from you, and they would run to you with arms wide open, God. I pray that you would supernaturally show up in these people's lives, God. Not in some kind of boogie, boogie, hocus pocus way, God, but I pray that you would show up in such a way that there is absolutely no doubt that God just showed up in my life and changed it. God, I pray that that's the moment.
that's the moment in their life that they knew that they knew that they knew God was on their side. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, I want you to go with me. We're going to start a... I'm going to preach very, very little. I know everybody's like, yeah, all right. Gentleman's like, I've been here like five minutes and Kevin's already mentioned I've been like six times. <laughs> go with me, if you will. To Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. <clears throat> and I had a... We had a rough day yesterday. Wasn't the greatest, you know. Go down to get caught in his oil chains. And I made people walk around and look at trucks I couldn't afford for three hours. We did eat Chinese, though, so it was pretty good. I mean, it wasn't all bad. If you like Chinese food. But while I was coming back and everybody was in bad moods and upset and we were, you know, cranky from being out in the heat all day and everything, I was thinking, man, I really need God's help right now. Have you ever walked? Have you ever been walking your Christian walk and you go, God, I really need your help doing this? How many of you realize He doesn't want you to do it by yourself? That's the whole point of Him coming from heaven. Dying on the cross and raising from the dead is so that you don't have to do it on your own. Amen? Go with me, if you will, to Galatians chapter 5. And we're going to go to verse 16. All right. When you get there, say amen. amen. All right. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the deeds or the desires of your sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to sinful nature. They are in conflict with one another, so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Let's pray. Father God, I pray that you would help us to understand our complete and utter need for you. I pray that you would help instill in us that we cannot walk the walk of faith on our own. We cannot walk this Christian life on our own. I pray that you would help us to understand that not only do we need you, we need each other. That we're meant to build each other up and that your spirit is to lead us and guide us and comfort us in everything that we do. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm driving back from Barnesville, and the first thought that hits me is, man, I really need God in this thing. And I had this thought. I was like, God, help me walk the walk. So I tried the sermon, help me walk the walk, God. Amen? I need help walking the walk. You, how many of you ever, we live really real close to a state called the Shelby State. And I was raised with uncles that if they didn't believe what you were saying, they would say, well, I'm from Missouri, you're going to have to show me, right? Anyways, people can say a lot of things, and I can say a lot of things, but if I don't live it out, if I don't walk it out, is it true? Faith without works is dead being alone. Amen? Go with me if you will. We're going to jump around on quite a few scriptures. So have your Bible thumbs ready. We're going to go to Proverbs chapter 20. And if you need to know where Proverbs is, it's right after Psalms. If that helps you out. <laughs> Normally, I just turn until I see a P and then I stop and go, is that it? <laughs> Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. Watch this. Ooh, I guess I need to turn one more page. Here we go. A man's steps are directed 
by the Lord. How then can anyone understand his own way? There's a very deep question being asked here. Okay? How many of you understand that God has given us all free will? Right? We've got choices that we make. Amen? How would God then order my steps if I have free will? That's a powerful question being asked here, okay? It's only once submitted, right? What's that? Once you submit, then you'll, your feet are being directed by him. There you go. Oh, man, you're getting ahead of me. Do you want to preach this sermon? Because yeah. you're getting ahead of me here. No, you're right. You've got to be submitting to God. You have to submit yourself to God to walk the path that he has for you. Amen? So freely, I have to choose to go, hey, God, I want to be yours. And then once I say I'm yours, I can't then make my own decisions. Ooh, man, that's tough, ain't it? For all you control freaks, once you say, God, I freely want to be one of your children, how many of the children in your, I don't know if I should ask this, how many of the children, how many of your children run your house? Put your head back down. Shame on you. No, I'm just playing. I'm just <laughs> Children don't make decisions on where I go to work, or what we're eating for dinner, or where we're going as a family or in our life. Amen? So if I've submitted myself to God as one of his children, I therefore can't go, well, oh God, we're going this way. Can I? I have to wait and say, God, is this the way I should go? So it's like your kids. How many of you ever had kids that would wake up way too early on Saturday? Yeah. I, I'm, I wish I could tell you what I'm about to tell you is a lie, but it isn't. I woke up at 3 o'clock or 3.48 Saturday morning. What about 3.48? My oldest son is with his grandpa. That's why he's not here today. But I woke up at 3.48 on Saturday morning, and all three of my kids are up in the living room on pallets watching TV at 3.48 in the morning. They weren't there when I went to bed. <laughs> so they were made to go to bed. This is the same way God does with us. If we get ahead of God, or God's schedule, but go, hold on a minute. You guys need to wait a second. <laughs> you need to slow down, and you need to wait for my time. You know, why? First of all, now God isn't as selfish as me and Carmen, okay? Because all we really want them to go back to bed for us so we can go back to bed, right? <laughs> like, why are you up at 3 o'clock in the morning and I want to go to sleep? You're crazy. Well, they thought it was perfectly fine because they didn't have school, you know what I mean? Yeah, she's nodding her head because she doesn't tell the truth. In the same way, watch what it says. Watch this. It says, a man's steps are directed by the Lord. How then can anyone understand his own way? How am I going to understand the direction my life should take? Am I just going to know it? Am I just going to guess? Am I going to just try it? Or should I wait and ask God? Amen? How many of you in your prayer life feel like God talks to you? Now, not only do you talk to God, but you can get a response. You should. You should have at least a witness in your spirit that says, that's the right thing to do. Amen? I'm not talking about you're hearing voices. We may have to get you checked out. You know what I mean? I'm talking about now. Don't get me wrong. God can speak to you when you can hear him if he wants to. But the general way that God talks to people is a witness inside. He says his spirit bears witness to our spirit. And that's how I know. Amen? Go with me if you will to Psalms 37. We're going to get into what Brad brought up just a second. 
Bryant Scholar. That's what they call it from now on. Bryant Scholar. Psalms 37, verse 23. If the Lord delights in a man's way, he makes his steps firm. Though he stumbles, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Now watch this. How does God delight in my ways? If I delight in his ways. Don't, you don't even have to turn there because I'm going to quote it. And you can get a King James Bible and you can read along if you want. Psalms chapter 1 verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor that sitteth in the seat of the scorpion, nor stands in the way of sinners. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on this law doth he meditate both day and night. And he will be like a tree planted by rivers of living water. Who bears fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, and whatsoever he does prospers. That is when God takes a delight in your life. When you take a delight in him. It's just like a marriage. Let me ask you a question. If you're married, are you married? You're married. You're married. You're about to be married, so I'm giving you advice. When you're married, it's very important that the other person thinks that you like them. <laughs> that's pretty important. That's a pretty important part of marriage, okay? Look, I don't have to like everything you do. I just have to like you and enjoy some of the things that you do so we can do them together. I mean, let me ask you a question. Do you like watching movie movies with your wife? Do you like watching the horror movies with your wife? So if your wife don't like those type of movies, typically. Well, then you're blessed. <laughs> 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 I'm going to be honest, when Carmen, when Carmen and I first got married, I thought, hey, I've got to watch horror movies tonight. i got to watch, you know what I mean? I was like, I'm like, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm an action movie kind of guy, or football. I don't want to watch no sappy too. Jerky movies. Now, now I watch it with her all the time, right? And she's like, Do you need a box of tissues? <laughs> it's well, terrible. Not to help your story. No, wait, no, I'm not, I'm not trying to make you feel better about it, okay? See, what I'm really saying is, not only does it take, they need to think you like them, and you need to find some stuff that you want to do together, sometimes it takes compromise. Even if you don't want to watch a Hallmark movie. But your wife's in a Hallmark movie kind of weak. I've been through weeks. Weeks of watching Hallmark movies, brother. And if that's all they're going to be on TV, I might as well get into it because we're watching it. <laughs> Amen? But God wants the same thing. Once he understands that you like him and you like the things that he wants you to do, then God looks at you and goes, you know what? That thing over there that you want to do, you can do that. How do I know that? What, do I, what Bible verse do I have to prove that? If I delight myself in the Lord, He will give me the desires of my heart. Not His heart. My heart. If I delight myself in God, he will give me the desires of my heart. In other words, once I delight myself in God, He'll delight in blessing me. Amen? Even with the thing that He didn't necessarily think I needed. He'll go, you can have that. Because you love me and delight yourself in me. Amen? Watch this. We're going to keep going. Proverbs chapter 16. I told you I was going to have you jump around. Now we're going to jump around all over Proverbs, okay? And if you want to jump up and stand up on your Bible, I will not shout you down, okay? It's okay. I had somebody get really upset one time because I, they said, you were talking about standing on the Word, right? So I threw my Bible down on the ground and I stood on it. Oh my goodness, you should have seen people's faces. 
They thought I was committing sacrilege or something. God isn't going to work. We can burn every single one of these books on the face of the planet. And the Word of God would still exist. Amen. Because the Word of God became flesh and dwelt among us. Right. And we beheld His glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus Christ is the Word of God. And He never stopped being the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Now watch this. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. I'm going to try to get through this without telling too many more jokes. In his heart, a man plans his course. But the Lord determines his steps. Oh, man. Now, look at me. I want you to look at me. because How many of y'all have ever made plans that didn't go the way you thought they were going to go? That was your plan. And God working out the steps. <laughs> Amen? I can make all the plans I want, but if... God doesn't let it happen. It's not going to happen. Amen. If God is determined, well, you know, God, I think that thing's really bad for you. I think what you do. You don't need that. He won't let you have that. That must be what he's saying about my car right now. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> now, we need to pray for a good mechanic to come around, right? All right, go with me to Proverbs chapter 14. Just turn back a page or two. And now we're going to get into some of the stuff that Ryan was talking about, some of the stuff that I wanted to get into. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. There is a way that seems right to a man, but the end leads to death. Sometimes you've got to understand that you need to be still and let God talk to you. Because the thing that you're thinking may not be the thing you need. I remember when I was, how old was I, Mike? 19 or 20? About a 20. Had a dream. I was living at Mike's house. I was 21. Living at Mike's house, and I had this dream. And in the dream, I, I seen some girl's face, but I couldn't make it out. And God was telling me in the dream. Literally, I could hear God's voice in the dream. He said, touch not the unclean thing. And I don't tell this story very often. As a matter of fact, this might be the only time I have ever heard me tell this story. That more than once, I told him more than once. Uh, like in a public setting, I mean. Maybe once. Okay. It's not very often. I didn't always listen to God as much as I, How many of you listen to God every single time He says something to you? Okay. I'm not alone. Praise God. We're all sinners who need God's help. Amen. So I didn't always listen to God. But I knew that I knew that I knew that God had said that. And any time that you know that you know that you know that God said that, you probably should listen. Amen? And I've fallen short, and I haven't listened, and I paid the price, had to go through years of heartache over stuff. Amen? Because I didn't want to listen. Because there's a way that seems right to us. But the end of that way, there's no life there. Just death. Amen. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 2. And we're going to go back to Galatians after this one. Proverbs 21 verse 2. All a man's ways seem right to him, but the Lord weighs the heart. Ooh, that's tough. Because we think we know everything. How many of you when you get to, how many of you are very proficient at one thing? You know, like, one subject really good. We all pretty much know one subject really good, right? Like, I can get into theological debates with anybody. I don't care, because I think I'm right about everything all the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> Until till somebody else comes along and they, they show me that I'm not right. 
We do that as human beings, don't we? Don't act like I'm the only one. When you really get, if I come up to Dustin right now and start acting like I knew more about painting than him, he would look at me like I was silly. Because I, uh, reality, I don't have any clue on how to paint anything, okay? You give me a brush or a roller, and I might be able to paint a straight line, maybe, okay? But I don't know what's in the paint. I don't know how to mix paint. I don't know any of that stuff. And he knows all that stuff. He's certified to do it, right? Just build, it'd be like me taking my computer to Bryant and telling him how to fix it, which I know you have people that do that. <laughs> he has people that bring him. Look, if you're bringing me your computer, but you know how to fix it, why are you bringing it to me, right? That's what kind of what you're thinking, right? So God... When we bring God our plans, He's looking at us the same way. He's like, you know, I know how to do this, right? I, I, I can make your plans way better than you if you just let me have the thing and you go away for a minute. I'll fix it all up. Kind of like that computer, right? You're like, just leave it here. I'll fix it. I don't need your advice. It's okay. I'm, I love you that you think you can fix it on your own. But you're bringing it to me for a reason, right? So when we bring things to God, we can't act like we're going to tell God how to fix it. Amen? God, I want you to fix I used to pray this way. I'm not even going to lie. I used to pray this way about my wife. I've told you this story before. I used to pray, God, fix my wife. Make her the woman of God that you want her to be. Fix this about her. Fix that about her. Fix this other thing. And God's looking at me like, you know I know how to fix people. Right? You know, I've been doing this for a long time before you was even born, right? Do you see how silly it sounds for me to take a problem to God and try to tell him how to fix it? It's silly, isn't it? God, I want you to do it this way. And God's going, but that won't work. What? Look, most of the time we want God just to do some kind of supernatural thing that doesn't have anything to do with changing me, right? God fix the situation, but leave me alone. Right? Oh, oh man, we get quiet now. We want God to fix our problem, but we want God to leave us alone with that. Right? God fix my problem. What if you're the problem in your problem? Just like I was. I prayed those prayers over my wife all the time. As a pastor, as I was pastoring the Gideon Baptist Church, praying these prayers. God, change your heart, change your heart. You, right? I'm almost done. And then I had to come to the realization when God looked at me and goes, How about you? Can I change you? Can I fix you? And then I don't have to worry about fixing her for you. Amen? When it was me the whole time. So if you're really going through some stuff with your partner, with your friend, with your kids, don't necessarily need to take those problems to God and tell them how to fix them. Maybe the only person, who, who is the only person in this room Whose salvation you have any control over? Who is the only person in this room that you have any real control of changing? Pretty obvious when you think about it. So don't pray that God fixes them the way that they that you think they need to be fixed. Pray God fixes you so that you can work through all that other stuff and be a good example. Amen? Alright. Go back to Galatians and I'm done. Because there's something really special about the chapter of Galatians that we were on. And I don't know if anybody caught it. But I'm going to throw it out there to you in just a second. We were in Galatians chapter 5, correct? Yes. Watch this. Well, if I can find Galatians again. Galatians, Galatians. Galatians 16. If you read just a little bit farther into this, in Galatians chapter 5, in verse 22. Now, this is a life of walking in the Spirit. Before we read anything, 
In verse 16, it says, They that walk by the Spirit, if you walk by the Spirit, you will not gratify the flesh, right? So help me walk the walk, God. So how does God help me walk the walk? With His Spirit. Now watch this. If I'm spending enough time walking in the Spirit, I'm going to bear some fruit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, fruitfulness, uh, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And then it says something really astounding. Against such things, there is no law. There's no law about being nice, okay? There's no law against being nice. You can do that. There is a law against being too mean to people and putting hands on people and hurting people, right? There's laws about that. There's no law about being too nice to people. The Bible says something really astounding. A gentle answer turns away wrath. Through the Spirit, gentleness, kindness, love, peace, self-control. Amen? Against such things there is no law. What does that mean in helping me walk out my life with God? So, when you're in a situation... And you're arguing with your spouse driving down the road, which I've done several times. And I may do it again. I do need to stop and ask myself, am I really walking in the spirit? Am I really walking in love and peace and joy and happiness and gentleness and kindness in this situation? Amen? Self-control. Mm. That's the one I probably have the hardest one with is taming my own self. Amen? So help me walk the walk, God. How many of you think you need God's help to do all that? To be gentle and kind and loving. Your brain's got his hand way up. Yeah, I need God's help to do that. Amen. I need God's help to do that. Amen. Right? Amen. 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 This morning before we go, this morning before we go, I want, to, I want to encourage you with this. Paul said that a life in the Spirit is much more pleasing to God. When Paul was finishing his, when his life was almost over, he was about to go get executed in Rome. He said, my life is about to be poured out like a drink offering. But I have fought a good fight. I have ran a good race. And I have kept the faith. The faith of our Lord Jesus Christ is love. Jesus gave his disciples two commandments, like I said from the very beginning. Love God and love people. That's our faith. So if you are having trouble doing those, get back to your roots. In gardening, when you want the fruit to grow, you have to plant things. So growing fruit in your life starts by little acts of kindness. Little acts of love. Little acts of self-control. That grow into a garden of fruit. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, I pray that you would help each and every one of us cultivate in our lives. A life of love, a life of peace and joy, full of the fruit of your spirit, and able to abound in every good work. I pray that you would help us to grow and, and to respond appropriately in every situation. And help others see Jesus in us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Leave Carmen looking at my tablet and was like, you don't have very many notes today. I said, they'll still have to stop me. <laughs> 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 <laughs>